So when you're going through the street and you can see a huge AR sign pointing at your restaurant or, or pressing the button telling you how to get to Nando's, for example, or you follow a chicken to get to Nando's, you know, <laughs> like this, this, this is very, very, very soon reality. That's how it's gonna look like. For me, one of the things that could be introduced to this new way of dining is potentially augmented reality. When you go to the restaurant, especially like Michelin star restaurant or some kind of posh restaurant, you have this whole theatrical experience that comes with it, you know, the smoke coming out of the dishes. There is things that you could be added as an experience to, uh, to the dishes in AR. There is obviously there is limitation of the platforms and limitation of tech right now, but if we're talking what is available right now, you could have, let's say, a placemats, paper, like a placemats that you put, every dish has different one, that you put under the plate. And then once you scan it, this works as a target tracker. So basically the target tracker is, is a spot that camera can get attached to and then you can start the experience from this so because mm. you know the size of the placemat you can it's not any more sizing on the size of the table or where people use it it's exactly always in the same spot so everything can be arranged around it mm. and then you could bring the whole experience if you think about like very posh uh let's say two three michelin star restaurant that they have like they bring you i don't know in fat duck i think they do this thing that they bring you like a uh, uh, small iPods with music that you listen to the sound of the uh, see why you're eating certain dish and mm. you know things like this you could recreate similar experience with AR so mm. you could for example if let's say this is a, uh, the dish is based on let's say it's dish room but they want this is the dish from like certain region of India a sound uh, maybe you know some things that pops out around that make it look like kind of you are in this environment let's say on your table around the plate there will be things appearing something based on forest and you have mushrooms growing from your table and the grass appearing and you know a, a bird flying by mm. etc and the sounds of the forest now you have lidar which is uh, technology is available on iphone 12 only and and on snapchat where you can uh, i think google have something similar as well for for modern androids but basically you can detect all the surfaces around you so then you can make that the forest grows or or the uh, let's say the grass grows from under the plate and goes around and transport your whole room and you know the whole environment yeah. into the forest the technology is progressing very very quickly and there is already a lot of things you can do to bring the experience play with like sounds and and just augment yeah. the experience basically there's a debate at the moment about what will london look like in the new future yeah. in the afterwards and you have all these incredible restaurants and i'm um, and you know nationwide we have incredible restaurants this is an opportunity for those venues to actually reach new audiences too again dishoom a place with an incredible environment within the restaurant just beautiful to sit in amongst and someone in liverpool won't have had been able to have that experience unless they came into London and I could have Dishoom delivered to my flat in Brighton and from what you've just described I could move my phone around to be in and amongst a Dishoom environment. Dishoom for example they bring an environment of the restaurant they trying to make it look like you are in India in some kind of like uh, mm -hmm. you know Indian restaurant they pretending to be in India, so you could bring the India to your house. There was this, uh, I think, Thai restaurant, someone in Shoreditch, that has similar thing. They have like plastic geckos that are near the, on the ceilings. Mm. You could bring those geckos running on the ceilings with AR, you know, bring this kind of experience. So it uh, depends obviously what restaurant it is, because you have certain restaurants that they are, uh, it's all about like service and, you know, white tablecloths and, and seven kinds of cutlery etc etc you could bring it as well but if you have a places that are very they're trying to take you to different worlds so for a few minutes for a few hours in london you feel like you are in sri lanka or in africa mm -hmm. somewhere 
or even things like I don't know, like rules, uh, who, which they have all the uh, you know venison and stuff like this, and yeah. you could bring that in. You could you could make it. And the history of rules as well. The pushback we get often is around the long-term value of that investment, because it is quite a big investment to develop this this new world and use these technologies. How do you see the value in this, in in augmented reality from a kind of more commercial perspective? If you're talking about those posh restaurants, it's about adding the extra touch uh, that just part of the cost. If you're paying 395 pounds per dinner, like it's in fat duck, you know, like spending of it cost for like 50 quid or 100 quid per person per filter or something, that's really nothing. Different kind of restaurants, more like average prices or, or like chain restaurants, you can have, there's a lot of things. You can have a visualization of your menu. So very quickly at home, you can just see the dishes in front of you. Uh, you can, which, as I was saying, in certain cultures, it's a standard thing that people prefer the ones that they can see before they order it. Once it's possible, people get into the restaurant because you could have certain things that are only available in the restaurant when you go there. You could have, uh, you know, like lots of shops are doing now the AR experience in the windows, like cell fridges, etc. So you could do something similar in the restaurant. As a comparison, you can spend the same amount of money on the video on on facebook or on the instagram story and and see which one will bring you more engagement and which one will give you more impressions you know which one will people react to more you could have that literally you go to instagram you see the dish you press the button and you order it from the filter and there's only social media then you have a web ar so you can do something to browser or you have native apps so you could have a some of those restaurants they have their own apps uh, and then so within their own app, you could have the whole air experience. This for me, the augmented reality in association or connected to deliveries within hospitality is hugely important, I think. Even you're going into a delivery bag and or an Uber Eats or a Just Eats bag, it's then you have to have such a strong brand to be remembered and reordered. When people ask me where the value is, it's in that extended customer service and experience to your customer at home. And also it's about thinking about the future because um, I, I do strongly believe that, you know, once AR glasses, the battle be between the biggest companies now, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, etc., who but who will actually make the de device first and who, which one will gonna be used. Uh, once this, I think it's around four or five years, they all saying when they're gonna be able to release the first ones. So within the next seven, eight years, as soon as, as soon as Apple will release it, you know lots of people will buy it just because it's Apple, not even because they want to use it. But mm -hmm. as soon as this is gonna come out, people will be, people will start using it. If you are already in the AR mixed reality space, you will understand it better as a restaurant. And then it starts from the things like, one of the first thing is gonna be in AR class is gonna be navigation and, and kind of ads in the navigation. So when you're going through the street and you can see a huge AR sign pointing at your restaurant or, or pressing the button telling you how to get to Nando's, for example, or you follow a chicken to get to Nando's. You know? <laughs> like this, this, this is very, very, very soon reality. That's how it's gonna look like. Some companies are already investing in it. And like, especially beauty ones like L'Oreal, they bought the whole AR company for themselves because they're like, this is how, where it's going and this is what we're gonna do. Pre-pandemic, what was happening with high streets, all the brands that they didn't embrace internet, they will start dying and taking, you know, Topshop will take over by Buhu and ASOS. So it's, it's about embracing new technology or they're gonna be out of business. What's one of your favorite AR creations? One of them was, uh, filter that I work with Unit 9 on uh, and was filtered for League of Legends, which is the huge, massive multiplayer game, especially in Asia. We're talking about millions, hundreds of millions of people playing every day. So uh, th that was a big, like quite a big project and quite interesting to, to work on because use actually game assets. 
So we had the assets from Riot delivered, and then we have to incorporate them into the filter and create their own experience. There are some silly ones that, you know, become huge, like we did a filter for Greg's, like watch paid what's for lunch or something like this. And that went insane, like, like millions of impressions instantly within the 24 hours, like everybody was using it. But it was just when the whole randomizer thing started. So it was like one of the first one. The cool one I was doing was this um, for Mario now, the uh, super drug, which is a experience with lipstick. Uh, you can choose different shades of lipstick. I think we have six different lipsticks and like 36 shades. One of my favorite things to do is save people's filters. Who do you think are some good AR creators to like check out and look up? Any, anyone that comes to mind? I can say three that kind of changed my perception. Mark Wakefield, who uh, was one of the first ones to embrace Facebook when it was still AR Studio. It was beginning, beginning of like, I think it was like 2017. Uh, so beginning of AR and he did this creepy clown mask, which then you two kind of bought it off him and he redo it for the, uh, to do like a U2, Mephisto character that they were using on the stage during their gigs. So that was the first one that went from like a gimmicky filters to something that was used actually as a part of the performance. Then will be uh, when Instagram opened, Joanna Johowska, she created this filter called Beauty 3000, which went crazy and viral everywhere. I think she was featured in every fashion magazine, mm. like Box, L, etc. Uh, and uh, everybody make a copy of it, everybody make the version of it. It was the shiny lights on the face was for like a few months, everybody wanted to have a shiny light filter. And, and, and she proved that there is a room for uh, AR in socials in fashion. That's not only a cheesy gimmick for teenagers and that the serious fashion brands start paying attention to it and now Pretty much every big fashion brand has few or more filters and they added it to every campaign. And then David O'Reilly, when he introduced like storytelling and it was basically this baby that you were a baby and then it was growing to the adult human. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've seen that. That. Went, that went massive as well. That was used by every celebrity on Instagram through like, you know, all the pop stars, etc. went massive. And it, I think it was the first person who pushed it from an experience between that user has to do something and filter reacts to actually storytelling that something is happening from the beginning to the end. So that was, that, that was I think for me, like a free that change the way that, that the social AR works. Because you can have so many different backgrounds to get into AR. You can just do 2D and you can do amazing stuff. You can just just do music related things you can do amazing stuff you can just do 3d more architecture or like there's so many other things or you can be amazing coder and have no clue about 3d and still being able to do amazing things so it's you can play to your strengths or learn new things if you want